Namaste. Welcome to Agriculture Affairs in Nepal with me, Nirmala Basnet. Dear viewers, let us now start the program with the main affairs of the day. Morang police have seized 16 sacks of black pepper smuggled into India from Nepal. Once famous for silkworm farming, its attractiveness is dwindling in Dhading district. Statistics show that the number of tobacco users in Nepal has increased in the last few years. And much more. Let us continue the program with the affairs of black pepper. Vietnam produces the most black pepper in the world. Vietnam provides 34% of the black pepper in the world. USA consumes 182,000 tons of black pepper, which is 37% of the world consumption of black pepper, making USA the highest consumer in the world. Black pepper originated in the south of India. In India, the black pepper is also known as the black gold. There are over 600 varieties of black pepper and only few varieties are consumed as food. The difference in the types of black pepper is seen only after the processing. It has been exported from India for the last 4,000 years. Black pepper has been used in the folk medicines of the South Asian countries. It is a very important spice in the subcontinent's cooking. The black pepper is also grown in Nepal. The next report is on the control of smuggled black pepper at the Indian border. The Morong police have seized 16 sacks of black pepper smuggled into India from Nepal. Let us look at this report for a little while. The police took control of the 16 sacks of black pepper along with three motorcycles from Jahada VDC-1. The market value of 425 kg of black pepper seized by the police is equivalent to 2,50,000 rupees. According to Superintendent of Police of the District Police Office, Morang Visho Adhikari, the same pepper was being taken to India by motorcycles belonging to the Indian number plates. Those involved in the smuggling of black pepper have fled to India, the police said. Pepper and motorcycle have been taken to Bratnagar Customs Office on Thursday for necessary action. According to the police, black pepper smuggling has spread to the district recently. The superintendent told that they do not know who the pepper belongs to. According to police source, the smugglers group fled to India after seeing policemen on patrol for the third time. The smugglers have opened warehouse at the border to smuggle more black pepper into India where the price is higher than in Nepal. Black pepper has been reaching India through small shops and warehouses opened with a permanent accounting number. According to Morang police, there are sales of 10,000 kg of black pepper every month in the border area. After the report on black pepper, let us now talk about the affairs of silk cultivation. Silkworm is believed to be originated in north of China, according to one record. The silk was first discovered when the cocoon was cut into half with a sharp knife around 4000 to 3000 BC. Production of silk started in China. The technique of production of silk without killing the silkworm was first developed in India. China produces the most silk and exports the most silk in the world. Silk is produced by the silkworm by feasting on the mulberry leaves. In Nepal, the silk industry is small. Before the earthquake, many people who were involved in the production of silk earned good money. Now the number of farmers who are interested in silk production has declined. It is believed to have declined due to the ignorance of the government. Once famous for silk worm farming, its attractiveness is dwindling in Dhading district. Let us look at this report for a little while. Despite the fact it was being cultivated commercially, the attraction of the locals has become almost nil in the last some years. Hundreds of farmers in the district earned millions by cultivating silkworm commercially for livelihood. But after the catastrophic earthquake of 2072, the farmers of the silkworm farming have reached a void. Over the years, the attraction of the farmers has also decreased. 
Although small investment and small businesses can be operated in small area, the number of farmers pursuing this business has been declining due to various reasons. Farmers have been found to be engaged in other occupations as the income level has not increased as in other farms. The farmers have said that silk cultivation is on the decline due to the lack of government incentives and determination of the farmers. According to the locals, silk farming is in crisis due to lack of technical support and assistance needed from the government for the farmers. The silk warm fertility generation Beige Koya Resource Center established by the government in Thuniwasi municipality of Dhading for promotion of silk cultivation has also become useless. Even the staff of the resource center has been dilapidated due to not getting enough work and the infrastructure at the center has become useless. The center was working to provide larva for the farmers who wanted to cultivate silkworm, facilitate the keeping of mulberry nursery needed for the worms and provide technical support. In Thading, which produces up to 11 tons of cocoon in a single season, now produces only 50 to 70 kg. After the report on silkworm farming, let us now talk about the fears of the tobacco. China is the country that produces the most tobacco in the world today with 2.4 million tons according to one report. China is the country that consumes the most tobacco in the form of cigarettes in the world which is 30% of the total consumption in the world. 95% of the tobacco is used in the form of cigarettes. The smokers lose 25 years of their life expectancy because of smoking. The cigarettes were first made in 1865. The first cigarettes were hand-rolled. Then in 1881, the machine-rolled cigarettes were commercially produced. The smoking of cigarette is envisioned as being macho and successful to influence the youth into smoking. In Nepal, the tobacco consumption has increased recently. This will lead to unhealthy citizens with low life expectancy, hence low productivity. This will raise the number of sick people in the country. The statistics show that the number of tobacco users in Nepal has increased in the last few years. Let us look at this report for a little while. This was stated by the Nepal Development Research Institute on Monday that there is increase in the number of people who consume the tobacco. According to the institute, more than half of the male population use tobacco products, which is 61.1%. Of them, 13% in the age group of 9 years to 20 years, 61% in the age group of 40 to 59 years, and 26% over the age of 60 years consume tobacco. Similarly, in the adult population of smokers, there's 33.5% men and 14.1% women. According to J. Kumar Guru, executive director of the institute, the adult male who consumes smokeless smoke is 43.6% and 7.4% women. According to the World Health Organization data, Bangladesh is ranked first and Nepal is the second most tobacco consuming country in the South Asian countries with the highest rates of consumption of tobacco products and India is in third place. According to the statistics of organization, the death toll is estimated at 27,100 Nepalese every year due to consumption of tobacco products. According to the statistics, among seven male smokers, one dies every year. In addition, 432 deaths due to cardiovascular disease are reported, and this number is increasing every year. Year. After the report on tobacco, let us now take a small commercial break. After the commercial break, welcome back to Agriculture Affairs in Nepal. Dear viewers, let us now look at the affairs of the industry. Industrialization was started in the 18th century in England. The economic development from 1760 to 1840 was termed as Industrial Revolution. The industrialization spread over the world, improving the economy of the world. The more the citizens of a country are educated, more ideas will pool up in the country and new 
industries will emerge. The farming culture will evolve into farming along with industries developed from the farm products. In Nepal, this truth has finally hit home. The government is working on programs to promote agriculture production and agriculture-based industries. This sector is very important for the economic growth of the country and the living standards of the citizens. The Minister of Industry is saying that there will be better industrial environment with jobs created for the citizens of the country. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Supplies, Lik Raj Bhatt, has said that he will work to make industrial environment in the country to produce more than twice the contribution of total domestic production. Let us look at this report for a little while. Minister Bhatt also claimed that oil will be brought to Nepal through pipeline from China within the next three years. Speaking in an interview organized by Reporters Club of Nepal in Kathmandu on Tuesday, he said that he would be active in fulfilling the slogan, A Prosperous Nepal, Happy Nepali, led by Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. Minister Bhatt said that he is taking necessary steps to create an industrialization environment for the private sectors as well. He also assured that it would be his first job to create an industrial-friendly environment in the country. Likewise, he said some new industrial areas were also announced and some announcements were also in the process. Minister Bhatt said that he was studying and researching the reasons why private sector industries have gone for profit, but government industries have gone into losses. After the report on industry, let us now talk about the affairs of the pig farming. In the Old Testament of the Bible, pig is denied as the food. Muslims do not eat the pig in Nepal. Till recently, the upper caste did not eat the pigs. Now in the modern Nepal, almost all the ethnic group consume the pig meat. This is why the trend of pig keeping is also carried out by all the ethnic groups. The pigs have been roaming the earth for 40 million years. 9,000 to 7,000 years ago, the pigs were first domesticated in China and the western part of Asia. The Romans started to breed the pigs around 3,500 years ago. Those who have eaten the pigs say that they enjoy the meat. The next report is on the business of pig farm. One farmer says that he is earning well from the pig farm. The business of pig farming is not as easy as one might think. Let us look at this report for a little while. Due to lack of technical knowledge, it is difficult to get business returns, while on the other hand, there is lack of land to set up a farm. But Dhan Bahadur Buratoki, a young farmer in Kanchan village in Rupandehi, has started making good income by establishing a model pig farm. Dhan Bahadur Buratoki, a farmer who left the profession of teacher, a teacher of hotel management, and taken up pig keeping, has now set up a model farm. He started his farming by registering a Lumbini livestock farm in his own land in the middle of the jungle. Despite the lack of manpower to work in the farm, he has moved the farm forward with the participation of his family members. Buratoki, who has been operating in a different way than any other farm, thought that he should become an entrepreneur rather than a job holder. The firm now has 300 pigs of four breeds. He had previously raised up to 800 pigs. Saying that there was no market problem, he said that there was no problem in sales because he had produced quality piglets. Buratoki said that from State 5 land system, he has received a grant of 10 lakh rupees from the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives for the establishment of pig breeding center. Buratoki, who's now running business in more than four bigger, said that there was no shortage of land to work with. Similarly, according to the information, structure and breeding center have been developed to provide the piglets to all the districts of the state. Buratoki, a farmer, explains that the best income comes from the sales of piglet more than from the production of adult pig and meat. If government agencies provide concession, loans and subsidies in the agriculture business, it is sure to attract 
thousands of youths who go to Japan and the USA for employment. After the report on pig farm, let us now talk about the affairs of lack of labor. Every day, 1,600 Nepali men and women go to foreign employment. They mostly go to Malaysia and Gulf countries. In the last one decade, the Nepalese Foreign Ministry has issued work permit to 3.5 million people to go to foreign countries for work. This is leaving only the children and women and elderly to work here at home. The Nepali farms are now lacking labor to harvest and manage the farm. Due to the lack of labor, the farmers are not able to harvest the rice on time in Siraha district. In the past, the landowner used to keep handy laborers at the farm site. The laborers used to plant and harvest. Now all the laborers have gone to foreign employment and the Nepalese land is left barren and unmanaged. There's problem due to lack of labor in Siraha. Let us look at this report for a little while. The farmers of the district have not been able to harvest paddy even after mid year due to the lack of labor. The responsibility of harvesting paddy is now in the hands of the women and the elderly after the majority of the youths have gone abroad. The locals say that the responsibility of the farmer lies on the shoulders of the old age farmers were facing problems even when paddy was being transplanted and they are facing the problem now at harvesting time too. Local farmers have said that there is delay in planting winter wheat. Most women and elderly people have been found in farming fields across the country including Siraha. Family members have not found happiness even at old age when the young men go to countries including Qatar for foreign employment. According to the Agriculture Knowledge Center, Sabdari, only 25% of the paddy fuels have been managed by the farmers and harvested so far in the 58 hectares of paddy fuels planted in Siraha. Although the paddy produced by the farmers began to be harvested from the last week of Asoj, due to the lack of farmers, the pace of harvesting has not increased. Similarly, the center claims that there is production of 1,39,000 metric tons of paddy at the rate of 2.5 metric tons per hectare in the district. However, the paddy that has been produced has not been harvested. This is causing the delay in the plantation of winter crops, say the farmers. Earlier, the laborers kept by the landowners used to harvest their land owners paddy as well as other farmers paddy but now as the laborers are gradually shifting towards self-employment there's shortage of labor in the agriculture sector after the report on lack of labor let us now talk about the affairs of khadya khadya or the food management and trade company of nepal is supposed to buy the paddy directly from the farmers. The food purchased by the Khadia is sold to the food insecure areas of the country. This would all work out well, but then the middlemen come to the business scene and upset the whole show. The middlemen buy the paddy at very low price from the farmers and sell it to Khadia at the price fixed by the government. The farmers say that they are forced to sell at lower price than the price fixed by the government because the Khadia does not come to purchase on time. They are in hurry to earn money to invest in cultivation of winter crops such as the wheat. They need to purchase seed and fertilizer. Since the Khadia does not come on time, they sell their paddy to the middlemen. The food management and trade company is starting to purchase paddy one and a half months after farmers sold their rice. Let us look at this report for a little while. A month and a half after the farmers sold the paddy, the Food Management and Trade Company Limited has started buying the paddy. Khadde has been waiting for the last one week in Kailali. After the farmers have sold almost all the paddy, food has started to be purchased. According to Prem Kaur, a former member of the National Planning Commission, who is also a farmer in Tikapur, the problem of mafia has escalated everywhere. Locals complain that there is no concerned body even after thousands of farmers are looted during 
patty purchase. Farmers have sold patty for 600 to 700 rupees per quintal this year. The farmers have sold the rice at low price in Karthik to collect the necessary money needed for everyday life. The small farmers have sold patty at 25 to 30 percent cheaper price to the traders and middlemen to cover the urgent cost. Locals accuse that Kadya has been buying paddy from the middlemen at fixed price by the government every year. The Kadya has been buying food from Sati, Tikapur, Bhajani, Joshi and Mohanpur of the district from the last one week after the farmers sold all the rice at cheaper price. Farmers have complained that Kadya is buying from the middlemen after the rice is sold at a cheaper price. The farmers of the same area say that they had to sell very cheaply even though the Kadya is purchasing at the rate of 2532 rupees per quintal of coarse rice. They say that there is no farmer in the state who can wait till the time of purchase by Kadya as there is a need of money for fertilizer irrigation and seed for wheat cultivation. This is all in Agriculture Affairs in Nepal with me Nirmala Basnit. Before I go, let us review the main affairs of the day. Morang police have seized 16 sacks of black pepper smuggled into India from Nepal. Once famous for silkworm farming, its attractiveness is dwindling in Dhading district. Statistics show that the number of tobacco users in Nepal has increased in the last few years. Thank you for watching Agriculture Affairs in Nepal with me Nirmala Basnit. I'll be back with more affairs next time. Till then, Jai Krishi, Jai Kishan, Samritta Krishi, Nepal Kushan.